Uh, this will be the last question. I'm sorry, I cannot get to all of them. After we go around here, uh, then you'll each have five minutes for closing remarks. So if there's anything that you want to touch on, uh, you'll have five minutes, which is more than twice of the time you've had now. Uh, and then uh, we'll have the straw poll. If, uh, if, you, if you haven't voted or when you're ready to, <coughs> be sure to put your voting paper in that box there. Just to hand up. Well, we got to take a second and clap for Scott because he got cut off. <laughs> At the tail end, Scott's never had a, a you know, clap after he got done with his uh, presentation that last one. Oh, thank you. Okay, we're going to go through the last one here now. Um, Debbie Stabenow is already, I, I work uh, in the media, and I uh, just uh, had heard from Debbie for years. Now I get two press releases a day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Debbie's uh, oh, yeah. a small yeah. yeah. uh, Debbie helped save the auto industry. Oh, yeah. Single handedly. Yeah. Invented the internet, too. So. Yeah. Uh, that was the car. He helped it. Well, she reclaimed it last week. Well, right. right. so, so, this is a question from the audience. Would you ever go for a bailout, be it for banks, auto companies, or whatever industry is determined to be too big to fail? And I would ask you also to address the issue of the bailout of the auto companies because Democrats, and Debbie Stab and I will say, in Michigan, we saved hundreds of millions of jobs because the government bailed out and set the auto industry straight. So did you, do you support that? And how would you respond to that on the campaign trail? That combined with do you support any bailouts? And we're going to begin, um, Chuck, Chuck, Scott, we're back down to Scott here. It's Johnny Bowman on bailouts. Thank you. Uh, like how long I get? Uh, two minutes for this one, then five minutes for closing. So this one's another two-minute question here. Okay. Uh, I oppose um, all bailouts. It's a intervention in the marketplace that involves favoritism. It is essentially robbing the taxpayers in order to pay someone else. It is what they call redistribution of wealth. It's basically that government facilitated that. I opposed the Wall Street bailout back in 2008. Now you might not only do have an opinion, I was also a candidate. Um, I was running for United States Senate back then as a libertarian, and I was quite vocal. In fact, the only commercials I ran on television were specifically addressing the bipartisan bailout of the Wall Street system. Um, as one, one un, not present candidate voted in support of the. Um, other thing, as far as the auto bailout, I was I got recording actually. I think I put up I have one of my old YouTube's when I was running back then. I, I ended up put up there with recordings of radio interview at WJR, and I said to to the audience, you know, the listening audience of Detroit, that I do not support bailing out the auto companies. So like, but then they could go bankrupt. Bankruptcy would be devastating. Well, GM got bailed out and they went bankrupt. We could have just had them go bankrupt, you know. Um, Bankruptcy is the way of dealing with that in a way, and, and some people get ripped off in that too, because there's people that should be paid that aren't getting paid by the company going bankrupt. But that's a lesser evil than creating this moral hazard where, well, if you're too big to fail, the government will bail you out. You do bad business, the government will bail you out. All that does is help the really big companies that are too big to fail get even bigger. So next time it happens, it's even worse. And um, the small companies can't compete that way, because of course they get the fail. And so that's um, where I stand. Thanks, Scotty. You know, the way our free enterprise system is supposed to work is it's supposed to reward people who responsibly and intelligently make good decisions. And the only way you can reward people for making good and intelligent decisions is if the system doesn't reward people for making irresponsible and unintelligent decisions. So I think it's immoral for the federal government to have taken $850 billion out of your pockets and given it to bankers on Wall Street because they made bad decisions. That undercuts the whole magic of the free enterprise system. The reason we have been an economic powerhouse throughout the history of this country until government intervention has tried to strangle that system is because of the incentive of reward. But if there's no right to fail, then there's not, by contrast, any reward for those who make good decisions. And if we want to have the most healthy economic country in the world, we've got to maintain that system of reward. 
I am against any type of government bailout, picking winners and losers, subsidizing. It hurts us all if the government uses your tax dollars to subsidize bad <coughs> decisions in the marketplace. That includes our auto companies. Bankruptcy does not mean going out of business. It means reorganizing. And the experts tell me that they simply would have reorganized and they'd still be in business. But there were lots of car companies throughout the history of the automobile industry. They didn't all survive. We ended with those that made the best decisions in the past. Now, this is an opportunity to make a, a point of contrast with the one elephant that's not sitting in the room, Pete Hoekstra. He voted in favor of the $850 billion Wall Street bailout, the very thing that brought the tea parties into existence. And that's one of the issues on which I know from speaking to them, the Tea Party activists will not enthusiastically work their hearts out in favor of a guy who voted for the bailouts and the debt ceiling increases and the Brady Bill gun control law, who's funded and endorsed by Jimmy Hoffa and the Teamsters, who opposes right to work legislation and co-sponsored a bill with Stabenow and Obama to force every state and local government in America to unionize all its public safety workers. And without the engaged, active support of Tea Party activists and other conservatives, I don't think the Republican nominee can beat Debbie Stabenow. We've got to have a nominee who can. Randy, again, would you ever, would you ever vote for a bailout, be it for banks, auto companies, or whatever industry is determined to be too big to fail? And how would you respond to the claim that the bailout of the auto industry has helped save the auto industry? Yeah. Well, again, I am in agreement with what has been stated. Uh, what is the purpose of government? Government is to set the stage so that free people can succeed, can fail, can create wealth, can fit. Good friends of ours, Jay Van Andel and Rich DeVos from Grand Rapids. Many people know they were very successful with the Amway Corporation, but did you know how <coughs> unsuccessful they were with giving flying lessons on the Grand River? They went bankrupt. They could have just said, oh, could somebody bail us out here and help us? No, they said, well, let's do something else. They started making soap in a garage. Unfortunately, they didn't have the regulations back then. They could actually do it. <laughs> but today, you wonder if they could even start a business. So there should not be bailouts. Things too big to fail is, is, is wrong. We, we, this Dodd-Frank bill that has gone through has hurt banks, hurt small banks. We need to get banks smaller right now so that we can, if they fail, they fail. But these big ones will take down the economy with them, and that's unsu unsuccessful and unacceptable. Finally, the, the tax system for our corporations is the second highest in the, in the world. Japan is only slightly higher. Actually, some states, if you have a business in like California, if you have state and federal taxes, it's the highest in the, in the world, discouraging business to, to get going. We need to lower that to 20%. It's at 35% as far as the federal number. And PACs, what an incestuous relationship there is between corporations and legislators. Debbie Stabenow, 60% of Debbie Stabenow's dollars, of the $5 million she has in her campaign war chest, come from outside the state of Michigan. She has hundreds of thousands of dollars that come from unions and corporate PACs and trade association PACs. I'm not taking any PAC money. That's, that's, that's a problem, perhaps. I don't care. I was a judge. I would not even let somebody from one party come into my chamber and talk to me without the other party being there. Imagine them giving me money and then deciding the case. That's wrong, and I'm not going to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, would you ever vote for a bailout, be it for banks, auto companies, or whatever industry is determined to be too big to fail, and how would you respond to the claim that the bailout saved the auto industry? I would never, ever vote for a bailout by the federal government, never. It goes against everything America stands for. As far as the claim that the bailout saved the auto company, that's just hogwash. Um, the auto company should have gone bankrupt. If the auto company is um, inefficient, losing money, cannot survive on its own, then it should go bankrupt. It would not go away whatsoever. All that happens is you can renegotiate contracts, you get protection from your creditors, and you come out stronger than you uh, went into bankruptcy. So uh, do not, would never do that. I would never support anything like cash or clunkers. I would never support TARP. I would never uh, support the debt ceiling increase. Um, government has to cut spending, uh, just cut spending. There's something in the Constitution called the Commerce Clause, which is totally misapplied. 
Commerce Clause says that the federal government can regulate commerce between the states as well as um, internationally. Our Congress has basically misapplied that. They said that our Congress now has the ability to micromanage every single industry within the United States, whether they have international trade, uh, you know, state trade or not. And that's just ridiculous. It's destroying the nation. We have UK regulations which are crushing industry, crushing our energy development. Basically, government just has to get out of the way totally and allow the free market to once again prosper. Would you support any bailouts uh, for anyone too big to fail? How do you respond that uh, the bailouts did save our auto industry? How many people in here have Ford stock? Okay. Do you know that your Ford stock, the people that negotiate union contracts, they sit on GM's board. And then they go and negotiate contracts with Ford. Isn't that antitrust? How did they get away with this kind of stuff? Now, there's two examples. There's GM, who got a modified bailout, or modified bankruptcy, and there's Delphi. Now, Delphi went through bankruptcy. It emerged just fine, no problems. Why couldn't GM do the same thing? Because GM and the, this administration wanted to put union people on the board. And that's all it was about, and so that's why they did it. I'm against bailouts. That's not what capitalism is about. The Constitution is real clear on a bankruptcy laws. And it's about time we return to, to our Constitution the way we the way our bankruptcy laws are set up. Uh, Debbie Stabenow. The reason I ran for office is for one big reason, and that is I'm everything Debbie Stabenow is not. She's been in politics since she was 24 years old. In 24 years, or the last 24 years of being in power, she has never, ever had a decent job outside politics. And this, over the last 12 years, is what she's done. She sat on the board of manufacturing. This is where manufacturing was in the United States. This is where it is today. She has driven manufacturing right into the ground since she is head of it. And as far as I'm concerned, she's not only done it for the United States, but she's done it for Michigan. We've lost $12 billion in manufacturing here in Michigan because of Debbie Stabenow. We also are a donor state. Every dollar we send to Washington, we don't get it all back. Even during our hard times, Debbie never fought for that money to come back. You need to elect people with courage to stand up to the establishment. You need to elect people who have ideas to fix the establishment. Not these old run-of-the-mill ideas that we've already been saddled with. You need new ideas. You need people like yourself to send to, uh, to uh, Washington. And that's why I came up with the slogan, I am you, because I am just like you, and I want to go to Washington in your name.